Joseph Lucky was only a child when his mother, 26-year-old Deborah Reese, was allegedly beaten 36 times with a tire tool her husband gave her for protection. My mother was everything to me. He spent most of his life hoping for justice and closure. When she was ripped from my life, it started a spiral that I almost didn't recover from. And my family has lived in the shadow of this event our entire lives. The man investigators believe to be responsible, Liddell Lee. Liddell Lee showed no mercy, no lenience to any of the victims that he encountered. He is the embodiment of the evil that should never have to exist in this world. He's been called a super predator, found guilty of four other crimes that include kidnapping, rape, and murder. It doesn't kill to eat. He kills for fun. He kills for thrill. All the while, Liddell Lee's younger brother, I mean, he's, he was a great brother, knows a very different Liddell Lee. He's a great brother. I mean, he took me everywhere. Um, taught me how to play basketball. Kevin Young, while living out of state now, says he keeps in close contact with his brother. I was able to sit down with him when he was in town for an anti-death penalty forum. He has a heart, you know. I mean, he. Um, if you have, if you have, if, you, if you're in need, you know, and you ask him for something, he will give it to you. I mean, he, he's just that type of guy. You know, he's not, he's not what they're portraying he is. He's not, I don't know who they're talking about. And he stood by his brother, who still claims his innocence. Young says Lee wasn't given a fair trial, and he believes he isn't the man responsible for the crimes he's convicted of. Well, he's a prayerful guy. We're a praying family, so um, we've been hoping over the years that, you know, something would uh, break and um, people will see that he's innocent. Young says he will fight until the last minute to prove his brother is innocent, while the state prepares to give the family of Deborah Reese the closure they were promised. The witnesses were allowed into the room at around 11 o'clock. At a quarter to 11, the curtain on the death chamber was revealed to see that the process had begun. A lethal injection was administered at 11.44 p.m. and the coroner pronounced Liddell Lee dead at 11.56 p.m. this 20th day of April. Three members of the media were allowed into the witness room to watch the execution and make sure that it happened as it was supposed to, along with about a dozen citizen witnesses and two lawyers for Liddell Lee. The three members of the media said that they watched the execution as it happened. They were seated in the front row, so they couldn't see the witnesses, but they described it as a somber room. And I didn't hear anyone say anything, frankly. It was very quiet in there and everyone was, was watching. A spokesman for Governor Asa Hutchinson came and spoke to the media and gave a brief statement after the executions. He said the governor was in the Capitol while it was all happening and considered it one of his toughest duties to perform as governor. Just a somber night across Arkansas. Uh, we remember the victim and uh, the victim's family. Uh, and of course, again, this was something the governor doesn't take lightly but we are proud of the ADC staff. Both the attorneys for Liddell Lee and the members of the victim's family chose not to give statements to the media after the execution. A spokesperson for the Department of Corrections said we could have more details from the department later this afternoon. Reporting from outside the Cummins unit in Grady, Arkansas, David Lippman, THV 11 News. After spending the final hours of Liddell Lee's life with him, attorney Lee Short is still processing being appointed as his attorney less than 10 months ago, fighting for a stay, then ultimately watching as the lethal injection took his life. It's tough to have just been having a conversation with someone about music and TV shows and then see a body bag that you know is meant for them. His final moments were spent calling his family members, including his daughters, giving away his radio and potato chips to other inmates, talking about his favorite music, reggae, and watching sitcoms. We watched Two and a Half Men and Two Broke Girls, and uh, you know, it was surprising that he he likes those shows and we watched them and it helped us a little bit forget about why we were there. Short had never represented a man during the execution process. And that's a tough question whether I would do it again. Um, I think that the next time I would be a million times more prepared. Short thinks the state's effort to execute eight men within the short time frame will make it even more difficult to find drug companies willing to sell the lethal injection drugs. They're going to continue to try because it's their legal duty to try and find these drugs. But if they can't find them, I think the legislature is going to have to move on to another uh, 
method. For now, the state can't plan any more executions since one of the drugs needed, midazolam, expires in several days. I think that in the future, uh, we're certainly going to see less inmates put on death row uh, because what you've seen is the suffering of the victims' families uh, by these long processes. A couple dozen opponents of the death penalty met outside the governor's mansion Tuesday evening, including relatives of two of the eight men who were scheduled to die last April. My family hates the fact that the justice system failed my brother. Liddell Lee was one of the four who was executed, and his sister says she still can't believe it. But one of the relatives of the inmates' victims said last year that the justice system failed for a different reason. It don't take 22 years to get something done. Get it done right. And people don't have to live like this or think about this for 20-something years. Pulaski County District Court Judge Wendell Griffin joined Tuesday's vigil. He strapped himself to a cot like a condemned man, Bible in hand, something that got him banned from execution-related cases last year. He chose silence, but the others at the vigil had a clear message. The state of Arkansas, they need to abolish the death penalty because you're not, you're not helping nobody when the, in this situation. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge said in a statement Tuesday that she'll keep supporting the juries that hand down death sentences. Critics thought last year's process was rushed and flawed, but Governor Hutchinson has continued to push for the death penalty and said at the time that the executions of 2017 were a good moment for our state. My goal was to make sure that we uh, did justice in Arkansas uh, in a way that reflected uh, well uh, on the state. I think that was accomplished. 